to Guyana uh, by the name of Icon LNG Guyana Inc. And our our company basically specializes in the supply and distribution of natural gas and also um, the distribution and setting up of dual fuel conversion technology. So as I said, we've been active in Guyana um, since 2015. And in 2018, we signed a contract with uh, one of our large um, larger industries in Guyana, um, um, DDL, Demarar Distillers Limited, um, mm -hmm. to supply LNG to their facility. Um, we, um, we did our setting up at their facility throughout um, 2018 into 2019. And we, be, and we began operations in August of 2019. And so far, we have been quite successful. Uh, we've been supplying uh, natural gas to DDL to power their entire um, operations in terms of their distillery and, and the other um, businesses that they have on the grounds at, at the Diamond facility. Um, and we've been quite successful. Um, and thus far, uh, we have um, done um, some many different in the vicinity of about 70 um, 40 foot cryogenic tanks um, um, to date. Um, ICON believes that um, LNG um, a provision now, if we if we were to get this into the um, the flow of things now, uh, we'll be able to um, jumpstart um, um, the, uh, you know, the way that the Guyanese people think and, and businesses and industry in Guyana think uh, with regards to using cheaper and cleaner fuel. Um, and this will lay the groundwork for uh, the gas that is, is coming ashore, um, hopefully by 2025. Um, so um, by the time that gas gets here, uh, our industries here would be um, well equipped and ready to receive them and utilize them to their full potential. So let me just get into a little of of what we've been doing here thus far. Um, so I'm on the screen before you. Um, this is our facility at DDL. Um, it, um, this facility um, can house um, 440, a 440 feet cryogenic tank at one time. Um, if you look in, in the background on the first pick, uh, we have two regasifying towers there and what what those towers do is that they will um, take the liquid natural gas and turn it back into a gaseous state where it is then pumped by a pipeline to the engines and it undergoes a combustion process. Um, and the other pictures show the other parts of the, of the setup uh, from different angles. But uh, uh, what is noteworthy is that since we have been operating in Guyana with DDL, we have been able to um, reduce tremendously um, and the carbon dioxide emissions and particulate matter emissions. Um, and particulate matter is, as the layman would say, soot, that black smoke that comes out of the, um, the stack um, of the engines. Um, so um, thus far, since August of 2019 to now, DDL has actually, and we've been measuring this, um, an EPA has been on board um, to see that this is done. Um, we have been, well, we've been able to eliminate 1,600 tons of carbon dioxide emission into the atmosphere, and some 45% less particulate matter is is emitted um, since we have begin uh, we began operations at DDL, um, and they've been able to substitute the use of diesel by some 50%. And, and like I said before, we have been um, quite um, good in doing this and, and we're refining our skills um, when it comes to this as well. We've been able also to provide training for um, um, various um, sectors um, that are involved in this business. Um, we've been able to provide training for um, the staff and, and the workers at DDL um, at varying levels in, in, 
uh, most notably or or included, um, you know, and the ones that benefited the most would have been the engineers and um, and those um, very valuable gentlemen that actually do the heavy lifting and actually operate the engines at DDL. We've been able to provide training for Guyana Fire Service um, and the companies that haul our our natural gas uh, via trucks um, to and from the site, um, and also our logistics staff um, in terms of health and safety. Uh, we've been able to provide that training thus far. Um, and we've also um, started employing um, some young technicians um, that have um, a background in electrical engineering so that um, they can assist in this entire um, new sphere that Guyana has entered into um, via ICON LNG. Now, um, the natural gas opportunities in Guyana are, are basically spread across four sectors. So um, what is noteworthy here is that we actually in Guyana here on an annual basis import about 5.6 barrels of oil. That is what is consumed in Guyana. And the four sectors that it spreads across or the usage of, um, spread across would be transportation sector, which is 37%, um, and power generation, 34%. And then we have the industrial and commercial sector, 23%. Now, um, most persons find this I find this quite surprising because um, the transportation sector is actually leading the consumption of, of oil um, that is imported here. And, and we feel that there's tremendous potential. So even, um, you know, that would be derived from targeting the transportation sector and supplying them with natural gas. And, and we think that the benefits would be immense, both um, financially and, and environmentally. Um, but uh, one of the things that we found um, that all of these sectors had in common is the fact that they are geographically spread out. Um, and you have varying, um, varying industries um, spread out along um, um, different parts of Guyana, uh, most notably on the East Bank of the Demerara River. Um, we have quite a few um, industries that um, utilize a lot of electricity or a lot of power um, spread out along those regions. And, yet, and even across the Demerara River, um, we have power stations there. So what we have been doing with DDL is we have employed um, what is called a virtual pipeline, um, and which is, is basically setting up a cycle of um, using um, vehicles, um, in our case, trucks, to bring the liquid natural gas to the customer's facility, have them use it, then remove the empty tank, and then, and then ship it back, have it refueled, and then the cycle begins again. There, there, there are other ways of, of doing this or other variations of a virtual pipeline whereby you can bring um, um, a vessel that is able to store LNG um, um, dock it at the port and and you can take off um, LNG from there and then distribute it to customers along um, I'm using trucks. So that is what we've been doing so far and we feel that this method uh, would be um, quite effective in dealing with Guyana's um, geographical challenges um, that we may have uh, when it comes to um, industries um, being so um, um, spread out and and wanting to benefit from the use of natural gas. So um, as I explained, um, um, the virtual pipeline is illustrated here in the photo and we are no way um, you know novel in, in, in what we're doing. Virtual pipelines are, are utilized all over the world um, and some of the countries are listed here um, and that you and that you have, you know, these guys are taking advantage of, of this method of transporting natural gas. Um, so it has been tried and tested and, and it is very successful 
it's a very economic and safe way of, of, of getting the natural gas and where it has to go in order to be utilized. Um, and this is just bolstering what I was explaining earlier in terms of how, how spread out um, um, you have um, self-generators. And this is just a picture showing 35 um, self-generators um, in, in, in Guyana. Um, and, and you can see they're quite spread out along um, the Damara River. And if you were to run a pipeline here, it would cost a tremendous amount of money and it would be a, quite a disruption um, to the daily lives of Guyanese citizens. Um, even the power stations, the main, the four major power stations that are here in Guyana, um, they are quite spread out. Um, um, if you were to look at where where the proposed site of the um, the gas to shore pipeline is is going to be, um, which is somewhere in Clonbrook, uh, Mahaika, um, um, to get the um, the gas to these varying power stations. Would, uh, would involve um, quite a substantial lot of work and a lot of time. Um, um, using the virtual pipeline, we can begin next year to supply these power stations with natural gas. Um, so that um, one, when the, uh, when the gas comes ashore, they will already have the infrastructure in place. And two, um, even when the gas comes ashore, and we can still utilize the virtual pipeline that will provide a lot of job opportunities for citizens um, and also knowledge transfer in terms of how um, um, natural gas can be utilized in this way. Um, this is, this is uh, what I was explaining uh -huh. earlier with respect to um, the transportation sector, um, utilizing um, natural gas and the benefits that can be derived from it. Um, so as I said, the transportation sector is one of the largest users of oil that comes into Guyana. Um, and on, on a yearly basis, we have um, about 37%. Now, our numbers from 2016 shows us that 2.4 million barrels of, of gasoline uh, was consumed um, by this sector. And if we are to use natural gas, it will be much cheaper um, and it will also, most importantly, reduce um, the carbon dioxide emissions um, and by some um, 25%. And it will also enable um, our Guyanese citizens to have some amount of knowledge transfer with respect to this type of technology. Um, this, is, this is done in Trinidad already. Um, it is done in Colombia, it is done in Dominican Republic, whereby they utilize natural gas in the form of compressed natural gas. Um, it's 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 attached to trucks, um, public and um, public transportation, in the form of trucks and cars. Um, they have outfitted their gas stations to be able to um, distribute um, natural gas into vehicles, and and they have been growing in this sector um, year after year. Um, one of the one of the um, the products that we are looking at in the long term is to construct a modular liquefaction plant. And when I say modular, um, and this basically means that the liquefaction plant can be increased as as the demand increase. Um, so we can and we can add on and 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 increase the capacity to handle. The liquefaction of more and more natural gas as it becomes available. So this is one of the investments that we're looking at, at we're looking at seriously, and we have proposed to um, the government of Guyana, the current government of Guyana. So um, I'm coming to a close, and we're looking at a three-phase approach to um, bringing natural gas into the sector. Um, the first phase is, is the one that we are already in, which is supplying um, the industry and, and commercial customers with natural gas. 
Um, the second, well, let me just expand on that. Um, yes, so uh, we have been in talks with a couple of other um, industries that are quite interested. Um, um, after they saw uh, what DDL um, was doing and the benefits that they have been deriving, we've been talking to Pretty Policy Investments, um, um, Edward B.B. Harry and company, um, even Marriott Hotel with respect to supplying natural gas to them so that they can be um, more um, environmentally compliant, reducing their carbon footprint and also save a lot of money in the process. So this is this is one, and this is the first phase that we're in and we're looking to expand into. Um, the second phase would be power and transport. And this is, is, is one that we're um, quite interested in um, because we feel that um, and there's a lot of, of room for GPL to be able to um, utilize cleaner fuel, um, competitive fuel with, uh, with the fuel that they, um, that they utilize now, and that will reduce their, um, their carbon dioxide emissions and their particulate matter emissions. The thing about particulate matter, it's, it's, it's there in the atmosphere and, uh, and because we don't necessarily um, you know, pay cognizance to it and, and we don't see it, um, and we are totally oblivious as to how it's affecting our health. Um, so uh, you know, this is one way that um, we feel very passionate about and um, that we'd like to um, charge and get into um, providing um, the power generation sector with natural gas, um, which will enable them obviously when gas comes ashore to be able to have a smooth transition into the utilization of that gas that is coming ashore. Um, in fact, Garden of Eden right now is um, they have taken the first step towards um, utilizing natural gas. They have actually purchased, um, I think it's three um, generators that are able to utilize natural gas um, in the capacity of about four to five megawatts. And, um, and, and we are, are, are we are currently speaking with them to um, um, see the possibilities of, of of providing natural gas to them um, at that facility in Garden of Eden. And, and like I said, the third phase uh, would be the setting up of a modular liquefaction plant. Um, we're looking at an investment of about 30 to 35 million US. Um, initially, um, this plant uh, will produce somewhere in the vicinity of 100,000 gallons of LNG per day. And we will train and, and employ um, about 25 to 30 permanent staff um, that will have um, new, new knowledge in terms of how to operate a liquefaction plant. Um, so there again, we'll have knowledge transfer being taking place um, um, for our Guyanese people. Um, and that is what Adam was alluding to a bit earlier as well. So in conclusion, uh, we are looking at, at, at doing four things. Um, so notably, we are, and we are here in Guyana already, we, are, we have an understanding of, of the challenges in the NG market here because we've been in Guyana um, and since 2015 and we've been studying the market and, and we studied it well before we made that investment here. Um, two, um, we have access to affordable LNG um, that can help to kick off the, um, the natural gas industry in Ghana so that um, we can be able to take advantage of, of it fully when, uh, when gas comes ashore in Ghana. And, and we're willing to, um, to make um, further um, substantial investments into this sector. And finally, um, I would like to emphasize that and the virtual pipeline will allow natural gas to be available to, um, to the people of Guyana, um, which will um, assist in our economy and also um, cause us to be, you know, smaller. Um, but when it comes to our carbon footprint, 
um, to reduce it um, so that we are not um, polluting as we are doing today and and causing a lot of illnesses and you know and things that um, are unexplained um, you know now as compared to um, before all of this started so uh, with that I'd, I'd like to thank you for listening and I'd be open to any questions that you may have Your mic, Valin. Your mic is not on. <laughs> thank you for that, Delma. <laughs> so thank you, guys. Um, Delma, this seems like a win-win situation. 80, 80 to 85 percent reduction in cost, as well as being beneficial to the environment. Because yes, you did mention that there are significant benefits to both industry and transportation segment. Do you have any idea? What tell? Give me, give us an idea of how the size of your company now. And I know you're saying you're going to go up to about 20 to 25 people just in the third phase, which is the LNG liquefaction plant. But what is the size now? And um, you have a lot of ambitious plans, which are very good for Guyana, and I love that. So what's it, what's sort of your size now? And um, how do you see that expanding over the next few years? Okay, so um, our size now is, is um, in terms of the management and the logistics team, it's, um, it's quite small. Okay. Um, be and because we have um, one customer, um, however, um, yeah. we yeah, we utilize we utilize a lot of local um, um, established businesses here already to manage our logistics process. Um, so um, we uh, we employ um, CNV um, shipping, um, who does um, um, the shipping aspect, the logistics in terms of the shipping aspect. Um, we employ John Finance, um Shipping, who does um, um, the taxes and also um, the, um, the ground haulage of the tanks to and from the sites and, and to the vessels. So um, a conservative estimate um, right now would be about, about 30 people are involved in, in our current operation. Um, okay. If, if we were to expand and go into um, power generation,